and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here is a simple but really nice weapon attachment system. I've got a weapon that I can rotate around, I've got these buttons for the various slots, and as I click on them I can modify the loadout to anything that I want. I've got multiple weapon bodies, so I can modify a pistol, a rifle A, a rifle B, I can randomize all of this. Even though this is pretty simple, I did the math and just with this I can already create 237,000 unique weapons. So anything from pistols to SMGs, snipers, rifles, and so on. Then when I find the loadout that I like, I can save it, and yep, over here are my nice save files. All of them with a nice screenshot, and I can click to load any of these weapons. Then I can also go into play mode and have a character equip my custom weapon. You can go ahead and download the project files and inspect the system for yourself. The reason why I made this is because right now there's an awesome sale happening on the Senti store. Pretty much all of their packs are currently at half price. Personally, I love their low poly style. I covered lots of potential games you could build with these assets in the sale overview video. And on top of the regular discounts, they have a flash deal every week with an even deeper discount. This week, the massive discount is on the military pack, which is exactly what I used to make this system. This one has over 1500 prefabs with a modern military setting. It includes lots of very customizable characters, several interval buildings and environments. It has tons of tanks, planes, helicopters, and regular cars. And of course, it has tons of weapons, including lots of modular parts, which is what I used to make this system. Check out the entire sale in the military pack link in the description. The special deep discount is only running this week. So now let's inspect the system that I built. It came out quite well thanks to using these awesome assets. And building this was actually pretty easy. I thought it would be quite a bit more complex, but it ended up being a relatively simple system. I built it in about 10 hours total. Most of the logic was actually done during a live stream. The rest of the time was spent on design and polish. So if you want to see how I work in real time, you can go ahead and watch that live stream. And you can download the project files link in the description. It contains all of the logic. You can use it with whatever asset pack you want, but if you also pick up the military pack and import it into the same project, everything should load correctly. So let's see how this simple system works. Here I have a weapon and I can swap between the various bases. So I can modify a pistol, a rifle A or a rifle B. Now here I see the various attach points for this system. So I can modify the barrel, scope, stock, grip and so on. Then when I'm happy, I can save this loadout. And if it shows over here on the side, the loadout with a real nice screenshot. I covered a full tutorial on how to do this in a previous video. So here I pretty much just reuse the code from that video. I can click on any of these to load these loadouts. Then I can go into play mode. And up here is my character using my weapon with my chosen loadout. All right, great. So let's look at all the code that makes this work. Now I refactored the code quite a bit after the live stream. So if you watch the live stream, the way that the code is set up now is a bit different. And once again, this is an excellent example of how refactoring is a perfectly normal part of the process. What you saw in the live stream is exactly how I work. So first I focus on making it functional and then I clean up the code. So instead of having just one script do everything, the code is now much better split into multiple parts. There is a weapon complete script that represents the final complete weapon. There is a weapon body which holds references to all the various attach points. And then there's a weapon part for each part. So here on the weapon complete script, there's a simple function in order to set a brand new part. For each part, the data is obviously stored in a nice scriptable object. If you don't know about them, go watch my dedicated video. They are extremely useful. You can create objects that hold whatever that you want. So in this case, they hold all the data for each part. Here is the entire definition. And really, there's just a type enum to identify what weapon part it is. So it is a barrel, a stock, grip, or so on. It holds that, and then as well as a reference to the prefab. Now also, one note here. As you can see, I made this system just based on visuals, but of course you can add whatever that you want in this sort of object. So if you wanted the parts to modify some kind of weapon stats, then you could define that data here in the same scriptable object. So back in the weapon complete script over here for the set part, this function first destroys the currently attached part, then just goes into the SO, grabs the prefab in order to spawn it. For spawning it, it needs to know where it should spawn that object. And for that, it's actually handled in a dictionary. So if we go up here, we see we have a dictionary where the key is of type part type and the value is of this class that I made. And this one you can see up here, it has the weapon part SO and the spawn transform. So these are the objects that have been spawned on this part right now, as well as this type of part type attach point. And this one here is the definition, once again, just has a part type and then a reference to the transform of where that part attaches. So if I inspect the weapon body, for example, here is the rifle B body. Inside, I've got a game object for the attach points and inside I've got pretty much just empty game objects defining all of the attached positions. So you can see the grip is attached in there. So this one's actually reversed, so like this. You can see there's the grip. 
Then over there you attach the stock, then the scope, the barrel, and so on. Also one important thing over here, as I said in the code I'm using a dictionary, but as you might also know, dictionaries do not show up in the editor. If you make a serialized field of type dictionary, then nothing shows up. So to solve that, I just expose a simple list of this type. Then here on the rifle body, yep, there it is, my part type attach point list. Here are all the elements, which as you can see, they've got a part type and then the corresponding transform. So there you go, all of the various attach points. And then through code over here on the web and complete, when we have the awake, it just initialized that dictionary. It goes in the weapon body, gets that list, and instantiates the dictionary with all of these keys. So that's how I solve the problem where dictionaries do not show up in the editor. So with that, continuing over here the set part. With dictionary, now I've got a reference to what should be the parent for the spawn part transform. So I just go inside dictionary using the key for the spawn part type for the part that we want to spawn. Just instantiate it, change the parent, and also make sure to reset the Euler angles in the position. Just make sure everything is positioned correctly. Just do that, and then finally update the dictionary. Honestly, this is really most of how this system works. It's really just this one simple function that makes most of it work. It's really just a clever use of scriptable objects, attach points, and weapon part types. As you can see, this function is very generic, just takes a generic weapon part as so, then the weapon part defines the part type, and so on. So just this one function can handle changing barrels, changing stock, magazine, and so on. Here in the body, all of the various attach points, they were positioned manually. However, the one tricky part was actually ending the muzzle. This one is tricky because the position of this attach point is directly related to the size of the barrel. So if I have this rifle and I've got a tiny barrel, then the muzzle position should be here. So if I attach something to the barrel, like, let's say a silencer. Now if I make the barrel bigger, you can see the muzzle position needs to change. And how I solved this problem was also pretty simple. For that, I made yet another scriptable object type. Except for this one, instead of extending scriptable object, this one extends weapon part. So it extends that one and simply adds an extra field for the muzzle offset. This way over here, I have all of my various weapon parts for my objects. There you go, with just those two fields. However, for the barrels, yep, you can see they belong to a different script and they have the extra muzzle offset. This is a much better option than adding the muzzle offset to all of the weapon parts. That way things that don't need any kind of offset, they would also have that unnecessary data. Whereas this way, only the barrels have that data. This is an excellent example to remember how you can always extend scriptable objects just like you can extend any c -sharp class. Then for the UI, each body also has a corresponding UI prefab. So here it is, it's a canvas set as world space. The reason why I made them in world space is so that I can move the weapon around and the buttons move with it, so that looks really nice. I've used world space canvas in a bunch of videos. They are really simple. You really just make a canvas and you set the render mode into world space. Finally, as the weapon rotates in order to make it actually look towards the camera, for that I have a very simple script. Here it is, the look at camera script, really just on late updates at the transform.forward equals to the same as the camera main transform forward. I also did this exact same thing, although with a bit more options in my free course, I use the same world space canvas method for the various progress bars in that game. And the script for handling the buttons is also pretty simple. For defining what button references what part type, for that I just created a nice serializable class and once again exposed a serializable list for it. So here in the editor I've got the weapon body UI and yep I added all of the fields with all of the parts. So the barrel and I got a reference to the barrel button and inside the text and so on. And then I just cycle through the list and add a click listener to the button and simply go into the weapon attachment system and modify the part on that part type. So all the buttons are really pretty simple. They are just basic clickable buttons that I can click to modify any part. And I also made different prefabs for different bodies since each body has a different number of attach points. Speaking of bodies, that was the most tricky thing about making this system, handling the various base bodies. Basically, you cannot attach every modular part to every base body. For example, over here on the pistol, it does not make sense to have a stock or maybe a longer barrel. And some of the modular parts on this asset pack are only meant to work with certain types. So there's rifle A and rifle B, those are very different. This rifle A is kind of like an M4, whereas the rifle B is kind of like an AK. So they have different modular pieces because they have very different body shapes. To handle that, I just defined another scriptable object for the various body shapes. They hold the body type, the prefab that spawns just the body itself, the prefab for the UI with all the various buttons, and then for handling the limitation on the parts, each of these bodies has a list object. This is another scriptable object. This just holds a list of weapon part SO. And this one basically is the list of all the parts that are valid with this specific body. 
So this is how I can very easily define that, for example, rifle A, if I go over here and I check the weapon part list, you can see it only has weapon A stock, weapon A mag, and so on, and it does not have the scriptable object parts over here for the weapon B. So with this, I can modify, I can choose any of these base bodies, and yep, they only use the parts that are available to that body. Another fun feature is just over here, the randomize button. This one was super easy to implement. It's really just this function. So it asks the weapon complete to give it a list of all of the weapon part types. So for example, over here, the pistol, that would return a list with just scopes, muzzles, and mags. Then just cycles through all of those part types, generates a random amount between zero and 50, and just calls change part to change the part that many number of times. So really just some super simple logic and yep, it randomizes all the parts and really creates some nice, interesting results. This one is another example of a feature that was super easy to add thanks to how all the code is set up in a nice, clean way. Then for the mechanic to click to drag to rotate the weapon, that one is handled over here in this script. Just on update, test see if the mouse is down, which by the way, of course you could use the new input system. I covered it in detail in another video. I normally start my projects with the legacy input manager, and after a while, I converted to use the new input system. That's exactly what I did in my free complete course. So anyways, here I'm using the input manager. I simply test if the mouse is down. If so, I grab the mouse position. And then I have a field which stores the last mouse position. So by doing some math, I can basically calculate the mouse delta, meaning how far the mouse moved since the last frame. And then with that, I simply use it to modify the local angles in order to actually rotate the weapon. Then during the live stream, I also noticed a very strange bug. Basically, if I clicked outside of Unity, so the Unity window lost focus and then clicked back inside of it, sometimes the mouse delta was huge and sometimes the weapon would just randomly flip 180 degrees. That was very strange, but it was a simple fix. Just over here, just clamp the mouse delta values. So if they are super huge in any direction, really just clamp them to a normal amount and everything worked perfectly. So making the weapon rotate is really basic, really just this script, so less than 15 lines of code. If you want to see a system similar to this one, then check out my How to Inspect Objects tutorial. That one is a really fun system to add to any game where you want to inspect objects. That tutorial is a bit more complex than this one since it involves rotating objects within the UI, but the core concept is really the same as here. Okay, so then handling the saving and loading. Now, I covered how I normally handle saving and loading in a video quite a long time ago, but despite that video being quite old, I still do the exact same thing nowadays. So inside the weapon complete script, over here I just defined a class for a save object, and inside I just put all the data that I need to save, which in this case really is just the weapon body SO, so I know which one is the base body, and then just a list of all the parts attached to that loadout. Now at this point, when I made this in the live stream, I wasn't actually sure if JSON would automatically serialize a script mall object, but thankfully it does. So up here for the save function, it is all super easy. It really just creates the save object, assigns all of the various SOs, and really just use the JSON utility to convert into JSON, and yep, that's it, everything works perfectly. Now if you don't know about JSON, I also covered it in a previous video. Then for the loading, it's also equally easy. Just takes a JSON string as a parameter, then use the JSON utility to convert back into a save object, and then with that save object, just cycle through it and set the parts that were loaded. So that's it, and with that, I can very easily save and load any loadout that I want. Now, just for fun, I decided to add another nice save feature, which I covered in another video, adding a nice screenshot alongside the save file. I pretty much just copy-pasted the code from that video. The image is gathered through a second camera. The logic for saving the image is just like I covered in the video on how to take a screenshot. It just listens to the end frame rendering callback, and over here on this function, assigns a render texture to the screenshot camera, just calls read pixels to read the screen, and with that it gets a brand new texture 2D. And finally, here is the byte structure for the final file. So it saves the bytes for the JSON save data, then also saves the bytes for the PNG screenshot, takes those, calculates a new header that contains just the JSON byte size, and really just packs all of those bytes together and finally saves the final file. And for loading, really just reverses the same thing. So it reads all the bytes, it reads first the header size, then reads the header JSON, and finally the screenshot texture. Again, I covered all of this in detail in the other video. Once again, thanks to the power of reusing some nice lint code, because that, it was pretty easy to implement, and this save system really works quite well. Having a nice screenshot image is much better than having a list of file names. And finally, the play scene. So I just made another scene with a character from the same asset pack. Then I made some super basic pistol and rifle animations. For this, I use Umotion to do it. 
since Unity by default cannot create humanoid animations. For unloading the weapon with the custom loadout it's on this script, it really just calls a function to unload and spawn based on this JSON. So this one once again grabs the save object from the JSON, instantiates the weapon prefab, loads all the parts saved in the JSON and returns it, and then back in this script it simply parents it to the weapon container transform. So inside the character as a child of the hand bone here is a weapon transform so this is a position. And the weapon is simply made as a child of this one, and over here you can see the weapon with various attach points and with the various scopes for our loadout. So with this I can randomize any kind of weapon that I want, then go into play mode, and up here is my character with a nice custom weapon loadout. Now in this case I'm just using a static character with some fixed animations, but you can imagine how you can use this logic and apply it to some kind of third person controller, like for example the third person shooter that I covered in a previous video, after that I also covered the animation rigging part in another video. So as you can see, after we have the weapon customization system working, it is really simple to add it to a brand new character. And of course you can use it with a character like this one in third person, or you could also use it in first person. Put all that together and here is a really nice complete weapon attachment system. Go ahead and download the free project files to try it out. Again, the reason why I made this system is because this military asset pack is currently on flash deal on the synthy sale. The deeper discount only lasts for this week. If you have any idea for which you need a bunch of weapons or any idea for a modern military game, then definitely check it out. You could make any kind of shooting game with this pack, or maybe something like an RTS, or use the include vehicles in some kind of plane or helicopter simulator, so there's tons of possible ideas. The project files includes all the code for this system, and it will automatically load the military asset packs if you import it into the same project. And beyond that, check out everything on sale on the Synthi store. If you like their style just like I do, then definitely give it a look. There's tons of awesome stuff on all kinds of themes that you can use to make an endless amount of unique games. Alright, I hope you found this video interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.